All right, so what comes next for the Conservatives? Ontario Conservative MP Marilyn Gladue and Alberta Conservative MP Garnet Jenis are in Ottawa, and they join us now. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks Thank for you so much us. for having us. Uh, Mr. Jenis, I'd like to start with you, if I could. You called Candace Bergen a good choice for interim leader. What does she need to do Absolutely. differently than Aaron O'Toole to calm things down for the next little while? Well, Marilyn and I were, were both first elected in 2015, and uh, right away we were serving under an interim leader, uh, Ronna Ambrose. And, uh, you know, I, I think there are, there are particular talents uh, and competencies that are important for an interim leader. Uh, you, you want someone who is a strong communicator, a strong performer, uh, also someone who is, uh, who is deeply committed to, to holding the team together, and also... Um, you know, also managing through that kind of transition time, uh, while of course there's there's a, a, an active leadership debate uh, going on as well, and the leadership candidates are putting forward uh, their message. And uh, Candace has has a long history of commitment to the Conservative Party, of being a, a bridge builder within the party. Uh, she's uh, she's been elected. I can't remember exactly for how long, but but right. since since back in the days when I was a staffer, uh, she was an active organizer for the party uh, prior to being elected. She's served in cabinet and she served in in uh, in multiple senior leadership roles in in the opposition um, she's she's not learning on the job she's right. someone who comes in with an immense amount of, of experience and she's widely uh, respected across our caucus different different regions I mean clearly that's evident in the fact that she was uh, she was chosen so I'm I'm really excited about what she's gonna bring uh, bring to the table um, I think uh, she is even in this interim phase she's going to help our party grow and connect with um, with with new people and look leadership races are, are, are exciting times there, there are opportunities for us to, um, to, to dig into to the important issues facing the country and be a little bit more public about, about uh, maybe points of disagreement but that, that, that may exist. But that can be a very fruitful process. Right. Well, well Ms. Gladue, though right on day one, there's a story in the Globe and Mail today from my, our colleague, my colleague, Marika Walsh, saying that Ms. Bergen advocated uh, in internal emails that got leaked to the Globe and Mail that the party should not ask the protesters to leave, saying, I don't think we should be asking them to go home. I understand the mood may shift soon, so we need to turn this into the prime minister's problem. I mean, what, how should the public react to that? Well, the reality is it is the prime minister's problem. I mean, he, he is the prime minister. He's allowed um, the truckers to come and instead of working with them and listening to them um, so that we could get over this, this has gone on now for a week and he won't even meet with them. So I think it's up to him to work. Uh, obviously the uh, city mayor has expressed his concerns. The prime minister needs to work to come and find a solution to this impasse. Mr. Jenis, what's your reaction to that? And what does it say that on day one, clearly a conservative is leaking uh, information to try to damage Ms. Bergen? Well, let me just say with, with respect to the, the protest that's going on, uh, there's a, a very serious issue around the impact on Canadians' uh, pocketbooks and on the services Canadian Act. Canadians can access that's associated with these uh, these mandates. Uh, we know that while while most truckers are are uh, vaccinated, taking taking un the the unvaccinated truckers off the road is going to cause sig significant impacts for Canadians in terms of what they uh, what they access at, at, at the at the store. So uh, I, I mean I completely stand with uh, with our leader and others in our caucus who have said that uh, that these uh, these these mandates. Uh, are going to cause a significant but This looks like trying to exploit Canadians. something that's making the lives of people in downtown Ottawa, Ottawa miserable for political gain. I mean, is that not a plain reading of what we're seeing there? Well, I, uh, well look, I, I, I think... Uh, oh, Mr. Mr. Jenis and Ms. Gladuk. Sorry, go ahead, Mr. Jenis okay. and Ms. Gladuk. Okay, uh, I, I'm so glad you've got an all-conservative panel. By the way, I think you should do this uh, more often. But uh, when it when it when it comes to the um, when it comes to the, the the protest that's going on, look, I, I think it's important for there to be there to be dialogue uh, between protesters and local authorities, uh, between the protesters and the government to address their concerns, to address issues of of, uh, of access. Uh, I mean, clearly, this is a, this is a city where there are large protests from time to time, but this this is going on, I think, longer than than many other protests. I think that dialogue is 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 important. Uh, the Prime Minister has not been willing to participate in that dialogue, though, and he's he's continually tried to demonize people with uh, well, legitimate concerns. Well, Ms. I, I, a question, I, I jump in, sorry to interrupt you, because I just want to make sure we get through some things and time yeah. is tight. Ms. Gladue, who, do, who would he talk to? I mean, the organizers of this have all signed a memorandum of understanding saying they want the government to go and this committee plus the Governor General in the Senate to take things over. Mr. Waugh from your caucus called that nonsense earlier, but that's the leadership. I mean, who does he talk to if he takes your advice and goes and talks to the organizers of this thing? 
Well, I'd invite them to go and uh, start talking to the individuals that are on the street. They're not all associated with the organizers. And I would also say that after Evan Solomon talked to me the other night, I, I went and looked at the web page. They're calling for the government to stop um, violating their constitutional rights and their human rights um, or resign. That's really what they've said on their web page. And, uh, you know, it's for the prime minister to have a dialogue. He can either have a dialogue with the organizers or begin with the people that are there. But at some point in time, there has to be some discussion and he has to come with a solution. The longer this goes on, people are right to be concerned. We've all seen protests that, you know, that go south. And so while I fully am opposed to vaccine mandates as a border town, we've had these truckers delivering essential goods for two years without vaccines, without quarantine, without tests, and with no evidence that there's been any impact. 39 states are open and have dropped all their COVID uh, precautions. President Biden is getting pressure in the U.S. about these very things. So I think it's time to have those discussions and to, to bring this impasse to a close. Because okay. not only are the people downtown Ottawa miserable, the truckers that have lost their jobs are miserable because they're losing their houses. And the cost of goods going through the roof because of the supply chain is causing people on a fixed income to be miserable. So... There's a lot of misery. The yep. prime minister needs to fix it. Okay, I, I want to bring the conversation, if we can, back to the leadership, if we can, very quickly. And Ms. Gladys, we know Mr. Jenis voted. Uh, he signed the letter. I'm assuming he followed through on his signature and voted to remove Mr. O'Toole. I wonder, Ms. Gladys, if, if you would tell us how you voted and, and where you think this leaves the party now, changing leaders again and going back into another leadership while in a minority parliament. Well, I think with all respect, it was a secret ballot, and it's a secret ballot for a reason. But I would say, you know, there was a recognition that the disunity that was happening was clear to everyone. And with Candace Bergen, she's going to be an awesome leader. We got a chance to make a fresh start, and immediately that she was elected, the, the, the mood in the room uh, of caucus changed totally. And uh, I could see uh, people, uh, they're feeling happy, they're feeling hopeful. And we have a chance now to go revisit, you know, the things that were wrong uh, from a policy point of view. Uh, Candace has got years of experience as a, a leader. She's been on the leadership team since I got elected. And, uh, you know, I think it's it's going to be an exciting time. She's hit the ground running. She's got us uh, going in QP and uh, with our opposition days for next week and certainly started with the National uh, Council to initiate the leadership race. And my hope would be that that doesn't take a long time. Um, but that we get that done so that we can move on. So, Mr. Jenis, does this changing leaders, though, does it give the Liberals a whole lot of runway uh, to sort of run right now because you're in this transition phase? It seems like that is the net result of it, perhaps in the short term, political benefit for them. No, I don't I don't agree with that at all. I mean, I think uh, you're, you're going to see uh, a, a vibrant and interesting and substantive leadership race. And that's going to uh, that's going to attract interest of, of many Canadians who are going to be seeing the vision that we're putting forward. Uh, and, and meanwhile, uh, our, our leader, Candace, and, and members of parliament are going to continue to actively represent their constituents, hold the government accountable and put forward ideas in the House of Commons uh, while while leadership candidates are out on the road, uh, drawing more people in uh, in it as well. Uh, the, the these, these periods of, uh, of, of vibrancy, of creativity, of, of renewal are, are so important for, for political parties because, you, you, you know, you can't, mm -hmm. you can't just be drawing on one person's ideas in their inner circle. This, this, is, a, this is a really going back to the well in terms of, uh, of drawing from the, the rich resources that our party has. And I think it's going to be a, an exciting, active, uh, important time for conservatism in, in Canada as we engage with the challenges our country is facing uh, and put forward a hopeful uh, vision. What, what Canadians are looking for right now is that hope uh, the, the government is telling them that that there's you know there's there's no way out of this that you know we, we we're we're stuck with with mandates and inflation and unaffordability and conservatives need to be able to make the case that that no we're not stuck with these things that there's a way forward uh, so, that there's, so that mr jenis who's the right who's the right person mr jenis to make that case who do you want to be the next leader of the party well i'm not gonna i'm not gonna in, in, endorse someone when i don't Come know on. who's running yet that's it <laughs> Yeah. Right. Well, I've I, I've I've said it's not going to be me, and and uh, um, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. I'm looking forward to seeing who puts their their name forward. I'm looking forward to a to a, a, a vibrant, serious, substantive right. debate. Okay, Ms. Gladder, just quickly, are you going to put your name forward, Ms. Gladder? You 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 try to run again. You're going to run this time. 
Um, I said I would consider it. I, I need to uh, see who else is running, see what the rules are, and uh, and think about it. But I, I would point out that we're slightly ahead in the polls right now, even with all the eventful things that have happened this week. So there's nowhere to go but up, and I think Garnet's okay. right. We've got a lot of hope for the future for the Conservative Party. Okay, we're out of time. We'd love to have you back talk about it again. Marilyn Gladue, Garnet Jenis, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And anytime you want to do an all conservative panel on any issue, we'll be here. <laughs> only only when it's only about your party. But thanks very much. We appreciate the time. Thank you. Take care. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.